Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 30th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Post an update earlier on a story that we had uh, two weeks ago uh, about uh, fake accounts on Twitter soliciting donations in cryptocurrencies for Ukraine. Well, uh, there are quite a few more of them uh, since we originally saw the first accounts here. One of our undergraduate interns, uh, Jesse LaCrue, did uh, write a quick script to search for some of them, uh, found very quickly 10 and actually uh, since then a few more accounts that are peddling the same crypto coin addresses as the initial accounts. Sadly, many of them are still online and are still collecting money, even though at least as far as Bitcoin uh, goes, uh, this attack hasn't really been all that successful so far, as far as we can tell. And then yesterday I covered a number of different uh, firewall vulnerabilities. Apparently I may have said, and I have to go back uh, to listen to it again, that the sonic wall vulnerability was already exploited. That's not true. The sonic wall vulnerability has not yet been exploited. The vulnerability that is already being exploited is uh, the SOFOS vulnerability. That's a CVE 2022-1040 and it does affect the SOFOS firewall. I'll link again to SOFOS's advisory just to make sure that you got the right one. And talking about uh, vulnerabilities that are being exploited, uh, CISA is reporting that uh, they're observing attacks against management interfaces for UPSs, the uninterruptible power supply, and not the shipping company uh, being actively exploited. Now, I don't think they're talking here about some of the vulnerabilities that APC recently fixed, uh, which were sort of more machine in the middle style vulnerabilities. But here they're talking about simple web-based admin interfaces that are directly exposed to the internet uh, with default password. So something we have seen so often with IoT style devices and uh, these UPS admin interfaces certainly are part of that same category. An attacker is typically not able sort of to execute code or so via these admin interfaces, but well, uh, by turning off power, they certainly can disrupt an organization's uh, network. The fix here as so often is don't be stupid and expose uh, these interfaces to the internet. Uh, I've uh, seen it uh, also often with similar devices like power controllers where uh, administrators like to have the ability, for example, uh, to reboot devices without having to connect to like a VPN or such because, well, that's hard and inconvenient. And also in order to restart the VPN server, you may need access to this power controller. And Cisco is reporting about an attack that they see targeting uh, Pakistan human rights activists as well as Indian military uh, agencies. So let me just assume it's probably Pakistan behind uh, these attacks. But uh, what's sort of unique here is that uh, they kind of take advantage of multi-factor authentication in kind of a different way. They're actually not bypassing multi-factor authentication, but the malware comes disguised as a Cavatch, which apparently is a multi-factor authentication application that's popular with the Indian military. So the victim is tricked into downloading this multi-factor authentication application, which will then actually install the malware and the legitimate application as well for good measure in order to make the attack more plausible. And recently, Brad had a write-up about an infection of a Mars Stealer. And now Morphisec now has an interesting blog post talking about Mars Stealer and how it ends up on users' systems. Apparently, well, uh, the bad guys are buying ads. We have seen this before. What's kind of interesting here is that the ads are for open office open office of course the free and open source uh, office suite and google ads apparently are advertising it 
but will then lead you to Mars Stealer. As always with Google Ads, Google is not verifying anything but that the credit card works. So always click on them with caution and one more reason to deploy some kind of ad blocker. And Brian Grebs has an interesting article how attackers are increasingly using emergency data requests in order to gain information. Now, emergency data requests are sometimes used by law enforcement in order to uh, get information, for example, from a phone company if uh, getting a proper subpoena would be uh, too slow. And phone companies have uh, some discretion as to whether or not they're asking for an actual formal subpoena. Now, the way this works for the attacker is that uh, they essentially just uh, take over an email account at a police department and then use that email account to send legitimate looking requests uh, to phone companies. Of course, in particular with the uh, recent focus on SIM swapping and such, this uh, could certainly uh, be abused by attackers. But beyond this, uh, definitely uh, be a little bit careful when you're sort of receiving an odd request like this out of the blue from a law enforcement agency can't hurt to pick up the phone and call a published number in order to verify the request if it is a legitimate life and death emergency. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.